Hi guys, this is Kathy at Fabric Bash and the Quilting Academy. Wanted to talk to you about this month's project. I'm a little bit, um, this month's project. This is live, so we're gonna just like have this unedited. It's gonna be what it is. It's gonna be great. Um, Want to talk about taking different materials besides 100% cotton and using it on your long arm. So first and foremost, I want to talk about leather. So leather is kind of fun, but it's a unique material because you put a hole in it and the hole's there forever, right? So a lot more strategizing when I get started on leather. First of all, you need to have a leather needle. We do have those available at the website. But what you're gonna do is you're going to probably trace. So this is an example. I had white marking because I used the appropriate tool for the material that I'm using for tracing. And I had outlined all of the horses first. When I loaded my long arm, I had a backing on here and lots and wool batting. What I did to get my look of the beautiful horse's muscles is I folded over some wool batting and made sure that I had that down in the appropriate areas because I had that marked of where I was going to sew. So I went ahead and I just sewed everything first of the horses. And then I went back in and did my lines. Then I dyed the material. So you can see that came through a little bit on the back side because some of it I used a lot. Think about when you're using different materials, how you're going to bury your threads. So I can't bring my threads back up this way and bury them from the front. So I had to bury my threads by bringing all of them to the back and then burying on the backside. Leather is a lot of fun to work with. You just have to be okay with, there's no mistakes. There's just no mistakes. Just go with the flow and hey, a lot of my lines are not perfect. Um, but as a whole, if you hold it up here, it kind of looks okay. So then this was my first piece with leather. Then I decided to do something more fun. We were moving our store and I had this piece of leather that we bought in 2019. Because who doesn't need purple leather, right? Well, I did. <laughs> so what I did is I wanted to have our logo. So again, look at your resources that you have around you. I had to take my logo and I had to blow it up extra big. So I had to get on Google and figure out how to make my thing to print and to trace it. And again, I traced it and then did my fabric bash first. Then did all, and then my needle. I did my needle and my thread in my different colors. And then I went back in with matching thread and did my graffiti quilt thing. So it was kind of fun. Backside, I loaded it just like a normal quilt with batting. I put extra batting and wool batting behind my words, my fabric bash. So I did my fabric bash first and then cut out that extra batting. But that's just something that you guys can think about. A lot of strategizing ahead of time. So what I want to talk about real quick also is let's look at some other, other things besides leather. Because leather is fun. Talk to me about leather all day long. Um, I'm gonna be doing some more projects with leather, but I wanted to get you guys to think about different materials for the long arm. So one of the things that got me started a little bit better on some of this was um, at a competitor box store, there was this material in the um, upholstery section. So if you look at the back, definitely thicker. I just used a regular needle, but I double batted my um, my uh, quilt top here. Went around my design. The one I did was a sunflower, and then went to town and just did some free motion quilting. 
So this is kind of a lot of fun. It's a little bit thicker. This is a little bit more forgiving than obviously leather, but I would be careful and think about what you use on your material for marking tools. So I don't think I would put blue on here because of just how thick this is and how sometimes it takes to take that blue to get out. Um, so think about what materials you can use. I would do a practice one. If you wanted to use a marking tool, I would make sure that I did a test one that it all came out. So research, research on what materials you use. So leading into other things. I'm gonna show you my wall hanging here in a second, but I have a new hmm, pastime. Um, my husband and I have been doing a lot of uh, antique shopping. I'm gonna show you this one right behind you, but um, behind me here in a second. But what I have looked at, I'm looking at <clears throat> all of these beautiful linens at antique stores. And this one really grabbed my attention because it's a little bit different <clears throat> with the applique of a um, more felty kind of like applique. I'm kind of excited about this one. Um, I am going to most likely leave these stains in here. I'm not gonna do anything with it, but I will probably double bat it, take some of the motifs on the outside, put them on the inside. Maybe I'll make another clock. I'll show you my clock here in a second. But here's another um, linen I would love to share with you. This one has intrigued me because <clears throat> just what I'm doing right here. I'm going to put some fun fabrics behind here and have them show through. How I'm going to do that, I don't know yet. So this one's just thinking in my brain for a long time. So um, another fun one, I'd have to be careful on where the fabrics, how they bled through because of the, the design here. But, you know, maybe I'll... Hmm. I don't know maybe it'll be kind of fun and maybe I'll put some more white fabric and tag it behind who knows it's gonna be a lot of fun but look at this wouldn't this be fun I think this one had lots of um lots of opportunities so that's the front and I was showing you the back this is the front so the one thing that really um got me with one of my linens is I made a clock so I'm gonna have Jake walk over here and we're gonna talk about my clock here we're gonna switch places here so, this is a linen that I found at an antique store. Already, the cross stitch was already done. There's actually a stain up here because I left the stain in. Our um, quilt show for the Omaha Quilt Show was a stitch in time. So, that was um, brought me the idea of everything. And um, I thought it would be great to showcase a lot of what my machine can do. So I cut out with our laser cutter all of these beautiful gears and I raw edged applique them on the quilt. But before I did that, let me back up. I loaded my quilt top. I had my backing. I had 80-20 and then I put my Tim Holtz fabric on top. Then I put another layer of 80-20. Now at this point my staff was like, Pew. What are you talking about? So then I put another layer of batting on. Then I laid this beautiful thing on top of that. And we started, um, I had all of the gears already fused down. So when I started quilting, I did my computer work in here. I did my um, custom quilting here. And then I used my channel locks here. So go to antique stores. I want you to find some fun projects. Other people are doing some great things with um, linens that they find at antique stores as well. But we made a clock and it's actually a working clock. And yes, it's actually 8.30 because we haven't changed the time yet. Um, but it's a lot of fun. I challenge you to try some different materials. Research your materials first. Research what tools like needles, um, marking tools that you can use on those materials and then just have a lot of fun. If you want to talk about leather, give me a call. I love it. Comment down below and I will watch the comments. 
follow us on uh, YouTube and this will be in the Quilting Academy. There's going to be a link down in the bottom if you want some more information about the Quilting Academy. We have a, a group that is off of Facebook that we have this on. So enjoy guys. Any questions, follow up with me. I'll keep, I love talking all this great fun stuff. Thank you.